Are any bispecific antibodies FDA approved? So bispecific antibodies, they are essentially very promising and I think they're going to really uh, very much change the landscape of myeloma therapy. At the present moment, as you know, late 2021, there's not a uh, bispecific antibody that is yet uh, FDA approved. But I think some are getting pretty close because they have very advanced data on phase one and phase two trials, for example, you know, teclistamab, uh, toquetamab, uh, to name a few. So at the moment, patients can access those therapies uh, going through their uh, myeloma uh, uh, referral center where they have clinical trials. There's a large number of clinical trials with bispecific antibodies throughout the United States and elsewhere. They are being explored primarily on, that, uh, on those patients who have had therapies with a proteasome inhibitor like Velcade or Kyprolis, an immunomodulatory agent like Revlimid or Pomelis, and a, monoclon a CD38 monoclonal antibody like daratumumab and Isatuximab. However, as they prove to be safe and successful in that setting, there are several studies under investigation uh, using those agents early on, so even for patients who are not refractory to all those agents, or even uh, better, combining those bispecific antibodies with agents that uh, we all have embraced as part of the armamentarium. Uh, what does the clinical data for bispecific antibodies show? So bispecific antibodies are very exciting, and we have over the last year to year and a half seen several publications and presentations on these. There are at least half a dozen of these in clinical development. All of them have shown at the maximally tolerated dose, what would we call the recommended phase two dose, to have uh, response rates in about two thirds of patients with complete remission in about one third of patients. What we lack right now is mature data on the durability of these responses. However, in literally all these experiences, there are already are patients nearly two years or in some cases even longer on these, but what the average length of response is going to be is something that is unclear today, but I think that we may start seeing some data to answer that question. Who would be the right patient for a bispecific antibody? So once again, like with any modality of treatment, this has to be something that has to be individualized uh, after discussion between a physician and their patient. The antibody drug conjugates are drugs that have had some toxicities, which are more in the myeloma area, ocular in nature, whereas bispecific antibodies have had toxicities uh, more akin to CAR T cells, but at a more muted level. You have a cytokine release syndrome, neurological toxicity, and th both of them are off the shelf products. So they do have an advantage in being easily accessible, and especially in a patient who can't often wait the several weeks that it takes to get a CAR T cell, they both offer good treatment options. But I think you have to then decide which of these are more likely to benefit a patient. With antibody drug conjugate that is currently licensed, what we know is that it's about three to four months of progression-free survival for most patients. For those who respond, it's nearly out a year uh, of disease control. With bispecifics, we don't know the data uh, yet on the durability, uh, but I think the decision on what to give is going to have to be made based on right now immature data. At what point in your treatment journey should you start considering a bispecific antibody? Right now, bispecific antibodies are available only on clinical trials. And most of these trials are enrolling patients who are once again triple class refractory. And so we are somewhat limited by the eligibility for trials on which patients to treat with a bispecific antibodies. But uh, like with any uh, treatment in cancer, ultimately these get moved into less heavily pretreated patients and ultimately even frontline patients. So bispecific antibodies, though today are available on trials only for more heavily pretreated patients, I'm sure in the very near future on trials will be available even for patients who have failed one line of therapy and ultimately even for untreated patients.